The story is told about two men in the synagogue at Mount Zion in Jerusalem where I'll be on Tuesday evening with more members of Temple Israel on the last trip for a while now that we've had over 530 adults travel to Israel with me or with one of our other rabbis over the last nine years. And there'll be three bar mitzvahs, and shout out to Isabel Wolf, who we'll be thinking of as she becomes bat mitzvah here. So in the synagogue on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, two guys were arguing who would officiate at the next service. The name of the first guy was Shabtai. He was a native Israeli, a Sabra. The name of the second guy was Moshe. He was a newly arrived immigrant. Uh, Moshe was arguing with a native Israeli and asked him, who are you that you should officiate? Who am I, replied Shabtai. I just happen to be the sixth generation of my family born in Palestine. That's who I am. Can you beat that? I think I can, replied Moshe. I may just have arrived in this country, but I am the founder of a hundred generations that will follow me. You represent the past. I represent the future. That's why I'm arguing that I should have the honor of leading our people in worship, even if I'm not a native. So Moshe and Shabtai finally agreed to uh, bring their argument to the rabbi. And the rabbi referred them to a verse taken from our Torah portion this Shabbat. Uh, that was always the safest way. It still is the safest way for me to settle an argument. Just quote from the Torah, right? Nobody could ever challenge an answer from the Torah. According to scripture, the rabbi explained, God tells Moses in the book of Numbers, it's really Bamidbar in the wilderness, and when you go outside the chapel, look at the living Torah. It's a beautiful artistic display of this. It lists the ten tribes. It, then it's called Numbers because of the census, and it says, you shall take, pardon the sexism back then, a man from every tribe, a man from every tribe, the sentence begins, he shall be the head of his father's house. I don't want to lose you. Let me make it simple. A man from every tribe, he shall be the head of his father's house. The rabbis noticed that the word he is grammatically unnecessary. The text would have read correctly, a man from every tribe shall be the head of his father's house. Why does it say a man from every tribe? He shall be the head of his father's house. Ish rosh levet avotav, who, if you want to know the Hebrew. But that word he only looks unnecessary, the rabbis say. The Torah seeks to emphasize that he is every person, every man, woman, and child should become the leader of a new generation, not necessarily by having new children, but by leading the next generation and empowering them. Therefore, the rabbi continued, the newcomer Moshe deserved to officiate. He explained that it was very commendable to be proud of one's past. There's indeed, I don't want to drop Yiddish on you, but great yichus, great prestige in being the sixth generation born in the same country, but that's not enough. More important is the new spiritual craftsman or craftswoman who carves a new future for generations to come. In other words, friends, it's important to be a descendant, but it is even more important to become an ancestor. It's not enough to be protectors of the past. People must also be builders for the future. 
people cannot only inherit, they must also bequeath. Every person must be a he or she, the head who leads and believes and empowers the generations to come. The question is not how good the past has been. That we know beyond any possible doubt. The question is, how good will the future be? We live in a city with such a great past, a Jewish community that rivals and has no other from Los Angeles to New York. This congregation was founded seven years before the Civil War and started the Jewish community. And yet, while we must always and should always live with the past, I got chills, I didn't say it, as Eva was being named in front of that Holocaust Torah from Czechoslovakia where none of the men, women, or children survived, but the hope was that somehow, some way, someone, somewhere would bring Judaism to life again. And that a child was named and that a bat mitzvah girl is going to read from the Torah and bring Judaism to life. Living with the past is part of being a Jew. Living in the past is the key to self-destruction. God forbid we say Kaddish tonight for our parents' religion. Let us say Kaddish for our relatives. But our task is to create a Kehila Kadosha, a Jewish home, a shelter, a common ground, a special place for every Jew to embrace a space to think out loud and to carry forward the life of our faith family. I just wasn't quoting the Torah in my last few sentences. I was quoting the song that Ellie Linder wrote and won an award for it in our high school, one of 31 seniors as she leaves for Indiana University, and Danny, the star of Memphis who's found her Jewish voice. Instead of Playhouse, she's leading worship from the class of 2017 and that your wife, Brian, was the class of 97 in confirmation. 20 years later, that's the question. So the best way for me to end what it means to be an ancestor instead of just being a descendant, is to invite one of the ancestors to be, Ellie, to sing the words I just said. Shell.
Jewish home, my little road, a chance to be a better me, a special place that I embrace, like the heat, my own shelter, my common ground, my space to think out loud. Kehila Kedosha, my Kehila. 